Hi everyone, this is a presentation about etymology, uh, the history of English in particular, uh, how English is related to other languages and how we can see that in some of its vocabulary. Uh, and then also, um, we'll, I'll show you how you can check the history of the words that you use on your own and you can see the history of English yourself. And there's going to be some analogizing with apes, so I hope that's helpful. Um, Speciation in apes. This is a family tree of apes. Uh, actually, it's not just apes, it's hominids, but um, the top left corner here is what we think of as apes, and that includes the genus Homo that we are part of. It also includes Pan, which is chimpanzees and bonobos, uh, gorillas, and as we get further right, we get further away from apes, as we think of them. Um, and uh, what the family tree illustrates is common ancestry. So when you have uh, Homo, that includes us, Homo sapiens, uh, and then you have Pan, which is chimpanzees, and you trace that tree down, do you see that there's a place where they intersect? That is the last common ancestor of both humans and chimpanzees, which is to say a good long time ago, I think about five million years ago, there was an animal whose descendants became both humans, I'm sorry, that's confusing, contain, whose descendants became humans on one hand and chimpanzees on the other. Not the same descendants, obviously, but different groups of descendants. Um, and uh, a similar phenomenon can be observed in languages. So you've got languages like English, that's the one that I'm speaking right now, um, you got languages like German, Spanish, Hindi, just going around the outside of this tree. You see Bengali and Punjabi around the far side, and Persian, which is also called Farsi. Um, and you might not think of these languages as related, but actually these languages are all part of the same family called the Indo-European family. Indo for India and European for Europe. <laughs> I don't think I needed to explain that. Um, but uh, English, you see, is one of the branches on this tree, just the same as Punjabi is, just the same as Russian is. Um, uh, it's, well, let's see, right now we would call it one of the, the twigs, I guess, at the very end of one of these trees. And that just means that right now there's a group of people who speak a language called English, and there's a group of people who speak a language that we call German, and if you go back in time far enough, those people were speaking the same language. Um, so people who spoke the language that would later become English could speak and understand to someone who spoke the language that would later become German. Um, and in the case of English and German, it's about, I think, 1,500 years ago, or 1,500 to 2,500 years ago that this was happening. Um, so much more recent than the apes and uh, the humans and the chimpanzees' recent ancestors. But still far enough so that no one alive now uh, remembers this. So here's just a closer view of uh, English and its closest relatives. So this would be sort of the equivalent of zooming in on just humans, Neanderthals, bonobos, and chimpanzees from the ape family tree. But you see English is very closely related, meaning it's close on the tree, with German, Dutch, uh, a lot of languages from Northwestern Europe. So um, the languages of Denmark, is Danish in here? Should be. There it is. Ah, it's under North Germanic, okay. So um, you see Swedish down there with Danish, Norwegian. Uh, closer to English, we got Dutch, Afrikaans, which is very closely related to Dutch, uh, German. And a little bit farther back, you'll see English has a family connection with Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, French, what we usually call the Romance languages, and you see here this branch is called Italic Romance. Um, these are the languages that descended from Latin, which is the language of the French. Sorry, the French Empire? No, the Roman Empire, not the French Empire. They spoke French. <laughs> okay, you can, um, the parts where I'm laughing are probably not going to be on any test or anything, so don't worry about those. That's just me messing up. So you can see these family relationships often in just the relationships of one word to another word that means the same thing in another language. In the, in the case of English and its Germanic cousins, uh, Germanic meaning the languages on this West Germanic branch or Germanic branch of the tree, you see that um, the words for similar things are very similar in form as well. 
So uh, we've got English father, German Vater. My pronunciation is not going to be good for most of these. Dutch Vater and Swedish far. That's interesting. Um, so we call these cognates. Cognates mean words that are similar because they have a relationship. Because if you go back far enough, they were the same word. And as time went on, different groups of people started pronouncing those words differently, started spelling them differently to the point where sometimes it can be hard to see the relationship, but the relationship is there, much like a human and a chimpanzee or a chihuahua and a German shepherd, right? The relationship is definitely there. Um, and all of these words in the close relatives of English you can see are actually quite close in form. Sometimes, as in the English cat and the Dutch cat, uh, just the spelling is different. Um, other ones can be a bit harder to see, but it'll be even harder to see when you get further away on the family tree of Indo-European languages. Um, let me come back to this. So this graph here, is this a graph? This isn't a graph. This um, list of words includes two words from the Germanic branch, English and Dutch, and then two words from the slightly more distant Romance uh, branch, so French and Italian. Um, and you can see the words are still similar, but less similar. Um, father, father, and <laughs> I can't pronounce English, father and vater, um, both start with the same kind of consonant, meaning it's a uh, labiodental fricative, and you'll learn about that in a future module, but that means you use your lips and your teeth to say f or v. Uh, the difference is one has your larynx vibrating and one does not. Um, so those sounds are very closely related. And you might not think that P is closely related to V or F, but if you try to pronounce P, you'll notice that you use your lips to pronounce that too. Um, and let's see, in the history of many languages, F, P, and V are closely related and also B uh, are closely related. And often when a word, when different words in the same family have those different sounds in alternation, it shows that they had a common ancestor. But um, anyway, it's not as clear that these are closely related, but if you look closely, you can, do, you can still see the relationships. Uh, mother is, I think, easier. Um, when you get to house, you see French has a totally different word for house, and actually the, the word casa that comes from Latin is apparently uh, not clearly related to the ancestor of house either. But um, that can happen sometimes where a word in one language changes for basically random reasons and people don't necessarily know why. So I don't know why French uses this totally different word for house uh, rather than some version of casa, um, which was the Latin word. Um, and an English example of this is the word dog. Um, the reason I chose cat for this, not graph, this list is because Dog in English is very different from all of its close cousin languages word for that animal. In most Germanic languages, it's something like hound, which is another English word, but not the most common word for that animal. Um, and basically, no one knows why. Um, the word dog is sort of a mystery. It, it seems to have come from nowhere, and no other language in Germanic uses it, so I don't know why English uses it, or why it became the most common word for that animal. Um, but if you want to check any of this information on your own, you can use a resource online. Uh, I use this one, which is an online etymological dictionary. Etymology just means the history of a word. And you can check words like hunt, or sorry, hound, um, which descends from an old English word hunt, which comes from a Germanic word, which I think was also hunt. Um, and that comes from Proto-Indo-European, <laughs> Proto-Indo-European, Proto which is the ancestor language of all of the languages on that tree that we saw earlier. Um, and that's the reason that all the other Germanic languages use a word that's very similar to this uh, for, their, for their dogs. And again, I don't know why English uses dog. So, um, again, uh, these, this list is slightly, has some slightly more distant family relationships than the last list. But we're going to get even further now. This is about as far as you can get from English while still staying within the Indo-European family. And that's Persian, which is also called Farsi, which is the language, most, language spoken in Iran, in most of Iran and parts of Afghanistan, I think. Um, 
and you'll see that there is some obviously obvious obvious relationship between the Persian word for father and mother and then the English words for father and mother uh, closer to the French or Latin words for those words. <laughs> um, and then the, there are some words that have deviated uh, for unknown reasons, and I don't know Persian well enough to be able to really try to pronounce these or to explain why they diverge so much from what, um, why they have diverged so apparently from what we would expect for words that are in the Indo-European family. Um, and it might be also true that these words are more similar to the Indo-European root than the uh, Germanic words are, but I don't know. Okay, and just for comparison, this is what these words look like in a language that's not in the Indo-European family. Uh, Japanese, which I also know, has these words for these ideas, for father, mother, house, cat, live. And you can see there, it, it would be very difficult to see any kind of family relationship here. And we shouldn't expect to see one because Japanese is not in the Indo-European family, meaning that no matter how far back you go in time, you're not going to find a group of people who spoke the language that would become both English and Japanese. And if you did, it would probably be tens of thousands of years ago. Anyway. Um, it's possible to draw these relationships out in a family tree, uh, just like, well, we saw a much better version of this tree earlier, but similar to the family tree that we saw for hominids at the beginning of the presentation. Um, so English and Dutch uh, diverged from each other the most recently, about probably 1,500 years ago, um, when boats of... Uh, I guess you would call them colonists, maybe settlers, were leaving uh, northern Europe, uh, mostly Denmark actually, and then sailing towards what we now call England. And by the way, the name England comes from the people who lived in what is now Denmark, the Angles. Um, and so, okay, a more distant relationship is between English and Italian. So. When we see that the node is further away, the node where Italian and English both meet is further back than the node where English and Dutch meet, that means English and Italian had a common ancestor further uh, in the past, and then even further for Persian and English. Uh, if you had, if you traced the, let's see, a common lineage of English speakers back in time to like 2500 BC, then somewhere in, I think it's uh, like the Ukraine, there would be a group of people who spoke the language that would later become both English and Persian. So, um, for English and Dutch, that point, that node of meeting is about 500 BC. That's a long, further along in the past than I said. Okay, but um, for Persian and English, it's even further in the past. And this is not in England. This is, again, this is somewhere in the Ukraine or the, the Caucasus. Okay, um, I'll take a break and I'll start the next section in a minute.